Hello everyone, it's Sharon from Sharon at Sea Travel. And as a travel agent, I get asked so many questions from new cruisers and I love answering their questions and helping them get excited for their cruise. So I thought today I would answer 19 of my most asked questions. Uh, and you're probably wondering why there's not 20. Well, stay till the end and you'll find out. So let's get started. I'm going to start with one of the most important questions I receive, and that is what documents do I need to make sure I can board my cruise ship? The two most important documents you will need are your boarding pass, which you will get when you do your online check-in. You can either print it out or have it available on your phone and your identification, which can be either a passport or a birth certificate and a government issued photo ID, such as a driver's license. If you are traveling with anyone under the age of 16, you will also need a, their boarding pass and either a passport or a birth certificate. Personally, I would suggest a passport if you have any kind of medical family emergency and you have to fly home, you're gonna need a passport most likely to get out of that foreign port and fly home. Yes, a passport will cost you a few extra dollars, but in the event of an emergency, it is well worth it. And when I say passport, I am talking about a passport book, not a passport card. A passport card is not eligible for international air travel. And on a side note, if you're traveling with children that are not part of your immediate family, I would suggest having a notarized letter from the parents or legal guardian showing that you are authorized to travel with that child. Another question I get asked is how early should I arrive at the port on embarkation day? Most cruise lines schedule staggered arrival times. This is usually a, a part of your online check-in process. You can schedule an arrival time yourself or have one assigned to you. It is always best to arrive around your scheduled time. Uh, my personal preference is about 30 minutes early. The sooner I get on the ship, the more time I have to enjoy the ship. That's how I look at it. But don't arrive too early or you may find yourself just kind of sitting around waiting to board. Now I have had people tell me that they like to arrive late in the day and then there's no issues. They can just walk right on the ship with no hassles at all, no lines. Well, that's an option as well. Although if you decide to do that and arrive a little late, make sure you do arrive before the final boarding time so you don't get left behind. And another little pro tip. If you want to get an early check-in time, the earliest possible check-in time, um, log in at midnight Eastern time on the day before your online check-in opens. And that way you'll be one of the first people online doing your online check-in and you will get one of the earliest times available. Now that's a little secret, so don't let that out to everyone. Now here's a question for some of you party people out there and that is, can I bring my own alcohol on board? Well, the answer is yes, if you like wine and champagne. Sorry, beer drinkers and cocktail lovers, you, you know, you're out of luck. Most cruise lines will allow a 750 milliliter bottle of wine or champagne packed only in your carry-on during embarkation day. Now, be aware, some cruise lines will charge you a corkage fee right at embarkation day, whether you open that wine up or not on board. Others will only charge you that um, fee if you have them open it up for you in the main dining room. So keep that in mind. Make sure you always bring your own corkscrew so that you can maybe open your glass in your cabin and carry it to dinner with you. And that may prevent you from getting a charge as well. Finally, remember to check with your particular cruise line for the most up-to-date alcohol policies before your cruise. Here's one for those that like to save a little money sometimes. And that is what is a guaranteed cabin and why are they cheaper? Well, when you book your cruise, there is an option to book a guaranteed cabin. A guaranteed cabin is a cabin that the cruise line assigns you shortly before you sail. It can be anywhere from a few weeks up to the day you sail in some cases. So you don't get to choose your cabin. And sometimes it may be a little less desirable location, maybe something that other people have not booked it's still open, or you may get lucky and have a great cabin, you know, and maybe even receive an upgrade, although that is rare. If you like to take chances and you are flexible, or maybe the location isn't a big concern to you, this is a great way to save a few dollars on your cruise cabin. Here's a question I get um, a lot from families, and that is, if I have more than two people in my cabin, where do they sleep? You know, that is a concern of people. They wanna know where everyone's gonna sleep. So when you book your cruise cabin, um, it will indicate how many people the cabin accommodates. You will find a number of cabins that will accommodate three and four guests. There will also be some for five, um, but those may be a little limited. And 
for any more than five, six or more, you know, you are going to end up having to book like a multi-room suite. And there are very few cruise ships that actually accommodate that. So a cruise um, for three will either have like a sofa that converts to a bed, or you will have a Pullman bed, which is a bed that pulls down from the ceiling. A cabin for four will have a combination of those two things, having both a sofa and a Pullman bed, or on occasion, it will have two Pullman beds. The pull, you know, usually when they have the two Pullman beds, that is a lot of times in the interior cabins. Or sometimes it may have a pull-out sofa that can accommodate two guests as well. Your cabin steward will prepare the beds in the evening and they will usually ask you if you want to have the additional beds left out or put back to normal during the day. So this is kind of a personal preference. If you have young kids, you know, that want a nap, you may want to have the beds left out. If you have a fifth guest and the cabin has a sofa, then you may have two Pullman beds or there may be a trundle bed that pulls out from underneath one of the other beds to, on the floor. Each cruise line and type of ship may have a few different variations and how they handle the additional guests. Cribs or pack and place can also be requested for babies and toddlers, although you are welcome to bring your own pack and play as well. Remember those cruise cabins are pretty small and as you add additional guests, they can get pretty tight. Another question I get is, can I add more guests to my cabin before I sail? Well, yes you can, but there are a few stipulations. First, your cabin would have to be able to accommodate that extra person. You know, if your cabin only holds two guests, you can't add a third guest without changing your cabin. Also, once a cruise is sold out and it has um, reached its maximum amount of passengers, no one else can be added to the entire ship, even if your cabin will accommodate extra guests. If you think you might add someone later, you may be able to book a cabin that holds an additional guest on some cruise lines. Others will not allow that and you would have to book a TBA, which is a to be announced and add that guest name at a later date. But remember, if you remove the TBA later, then you can occur a penalty charge, just as if you canceled off a person off your reservation. Also, some cruise lines will not book two people in a cabin that is for three. And you will have to switch your cabin and some cruise lines will reprice your cruise at the current rate when doing this. And, you know, you will be subject to possibly paying a higher price. Another question I receive that people seem to be concerned with sometimes is what do I do with my passport when I'm on the ship? They want to keep it safe. <laughs> so I get that question asked a lot. Many people ask if they have to take their passport off the ship with them when they are in ports. Uh, the short answer to this is no, but there are exceptions, you know, <laughs> when leaving the ship. Most uh, destinations, you do not need to carry your passport off to go ashore. And it is not worth risking your passport getting lost or stolen. Just keep it in your cabin safe. That is the best place to keep it during your cruise. Now, there are a few exceptions, as I mentioned, when it comes to certain foreign countries that require you bring it off with you. The cruise line will most likely keep you informed of this before disembarking the ship in port. And if you are unsure, it's always a great idea to ask one of the crew members before leaving the ship. During your sailing, you'll want to store your passport in the cabin safe. The safe in your cabin is actually the safest place. And if for any reason you don't make it back on board the ship, the crew will go to your cabin safe. They will look for any personal items like ID, passports and things like that. And they will leave it with the port officials. So once you return, you will have your identification to make it home or to the next port. Some people also make a copy of their passport and carry it off the ship with them and it makes them feel a little safer. And you can also email it to yourself as well. And that way you can pull it up on your phone if you ever get in a bind. All right, another thing that people are really concerned about and that is the food on the ship. Is food free on a cruise ship? Is all the food free? You know, I get asked that a lot of times. Um, so for new cruisers, this can be very confusing sometimes. Um, you can, it's slightly different amongst different cruise lines as well. The best way I can answer this question is to say that breakfast, lunch, and dinner are all included in the cruise at no additional charge. Every cruise will have a version of a buffet style um, area serving all three meals a day with the main dining room serving breakfast and dinner and sometimes lunch or brunch 
When you book your cruise, you will usually choose which dinner seating you want in the main dining room, but almost all other times are first come first serve. Cruise ships will also offer select venues, which are included as well. A good rule of thumb is if you see a menu with no prices on it, chances are the food is included. But that does vary depending on the cruise line. You will find other included food venues on ships that may serve burgers, pizza, bur burritos, tacos, and all kinds of other things. And some are free and there may be some that have slight upcharges like specialty coffee and dessert bars. This is also the case with room service. You'll find that some cruise lines will have included food with a charge um, to deliver it to you. Others, each food item will have a charge and it's free delivery. I have found that most cruise lines do still offer complimentary continental breakfast and coffee in the morning until a specific time. Another popular dining option is called specialty dining. There will be alternate dining options or restaurants on the ship that will offer a more intimate dining experience for an additional charge and on occasion you may find items from these venues in the main dining room on their menu as well for an upcharge along with the regular included items on a side note water juices iced tea and coffee will be included soda alcoholic drinks and specialty drinks will have an additional charge Anything that costs extra will be charged to your cabin and included in your final bill. So make sure everyone you're traveling with is aware of this so you don't have any surprises at the end of your cruise. The bottom line is you can go the entire cruise and eat like a king for no additional charge. Now that we've talked about food, let's get into drinks a little bit and what is included and what is not. As I mentioned a few things that are included, um, let's go over them again. Coffee, regular tea, juices, lemonade, iced tea, milk, and water by the glass are included. Bottled water will usually cost you extra, although you can often pre-purchase it and have it delivered to your cabin. You will find beer, wine, liquor, sodas, energy drinks, specialty coffees, milkshakes will have an additional charge. The charge will also include gratuities and anytime you're charged, you will be presented with a receipt to sign to show those charges. If you expect to drink a lot of these items, I would suggest maybe looking into a drink package that you can either pre-purchase or purchase once on board. Packages can include alcohol or soda or a combination of both. And the prices can range quite a bit between the different cruise lines. Here's a question I get surprisingly quite often and that is, is the water safe to drink on a cruise ship? Well, Yes, cruise ships um, have a purifying system and the water you receive from the bar, restaurants, or the self-serve drink stations in the buffet are all safe to drink. Some people just prefer bottled water as kind of a personal preference. As a matter of fact, we made a video about this a while back and when you're done with this video, you know, you can click on this and go check it out. I'll post it right up here for you. Another question I receive is, can I make calls from the cruise ship? First, your cabin does have a phone in it and it can be used for many reasons like ordering room service, call housekeeping, call customer service, or call another cruise cabin. You can also make calls home from your cruise cabin phone as well, although it will cost you and it can be very pricey. But in the event of an emergency, it is an option. Also, family and friends at home can contact you um, the, through the cruise line as well. So no worries about that. They will be able to contact you in the event of an emergency. Now, as far as cell phone service, that's a whole nother ball game here. Um, this is not the same as, you know, at sea as when you're at home. Once your ship sets sail from the port, you should always place your phone in airplane mode. This is very important to avoid any data charges. You can always purchase a Wi-Fi package through the ship to communicate with friends and family at home while at sea through messenger apps, email, and in many cases, Wi-Fi text messages will come through as well. Remember, even if you are using the ship's Wi-Fi service, keep your phone in airplane mo mode to avoid any additional charges. One last thing about cell phones, cruise lines now have apps that you can use um, before and during your cruise from, for everything from checking in, um, for your cruise to seeing the daily activities, making dinner reservations, entertainment reservations while you're on board. Uh, and you can also use the ship's app to communicate with others in your party for a small fee as well. 
Just remember, even though you may use the phone often on the ship for many different reasons, keep it in airplane mode. Now we spoke a little bit about food um, on the cruise ship. Now let's talk a little bit about food kind of off the cruise ship in specifically the private islands. This is a question I get asked frequently, is the food included on the cruise line private islands? Many cruise lines now have their own private island destinations, a lot of them being in the Bahamas. You know, they go there um, as one of their ports of call. When you visit the cruise line private islands, the most cases the food is included, although there are some private islands that have additional venues that may have an additional fee. Again, look for the posted menu where you're at and see if there is any kind of pricing that um, shows that there's an additional charge associated with it. This also pertains to the drink packages on the private islands as well where some cruise lines include the drink package on their private islands and others do not. So don't assume, since you've been to one private island, that they are all the same. Be sure to ask before your cruise so you don't run into any surprises. Now let's talk a little bit about TV on a cruise ship. I know that may sound strange to some, but some people enjoy watching a little TV on a cruise ship or keeping up to date on news and things like that, while others you know, like to shut it down and, and not watch a thing but I get this asked quite frequently as well, and that is, will I be able to watch my favorite TV shows in my cruise cabin? While there are TVs in the cabins and some of the newer ships have some pretty large flat screen TVs, the channel selections can be a little underwhelming. Each cruise line has their own specific channels they offer in most cases, and again, on newer ships, um, the TVs will be interactive and provide all kinds of information about your cruise as well as offering pay-per-view movies. But there are rarely the option for, you know, the usual local channels that you're used to or cable stations. You might um, be lucky to kind of catch a sporting event um, and they usually have some sort of news channel, a channel for kids, and maybe a couple channels with some family-friendly movies as well. We often leave the TV in our cabin on the informational channel or maybe um, there's also a channel that has like a forward or aft view of the Lido or the Lido deck and plays some music. And sometimes we leave that on while we're in our cabin, just kind of as background noise. Another question I get asked is, do I need to bring beach towels on a cruise? Well, no, you do not. Do not waste your packing space in your luggage for beach towels. Large beach towels are provided by the cruise line um, to use on the ship and also for shore excursions. Some cruise lines will leave a fresh um, towel daily in your stateroom, while others will have an, them available out on the Lido deck, the pool deck area that you can check out, and also an area like a stand where you can pick them up when you're getting off the ship in port. Just make sure you do return them because they will charge you if you don't. Another thing I get asked quite frequently for a lot of times the women is, <laughs> do I need to bring a hair dryer? Well, cruise ship cabins usually have hair dryers in all the cabins. They are often found in one of the drawers on the vanity or desk area. Some are not the best quality um, or they're kind of a little bit of a hassle to use the way they're, they kind of are plugged in. You can't move around with them much. So if you've spent a lot of time drying your hair, you may want to bring your own. Here's a great question um, for those who like to travel carry on only or for families as well. And that is, can I do laundry on board the cruise ship? Laundry can always be done on a cruise ship, although depending on the cruise line and ship you are on will depend on whether they have self-service laundry or if you have to send your laundry out for the cruise line to wash. If you send it out, they will usually charge you per bag for their laundry service. On cruise lines I have sailed on, I have seen um, a bag of laundry as low as $15 a bag and as high as $30 a bag. If your cruise ship offers self-service laundry, I would recommend bringing travel size detergent and fabric softener or dryer sheets. It will save you money if you're gonna do quite a bit of laundry as um, you know, you can, it can add up purchasing those on the ship and also a lot of times the machines run out of those things and then you will be left with no detergent to wash your clothes. Usually the self-service laundry machines will use your key card as a form of payment to your onboard account. Here's another very common question. Do I have to get all dressed up for dinner on a cruise ship? Several years ago, dressing up on a cruise was a big thing. Every night people wore their Sunday best outfits to dinner. Formal nights consisted of ballroom gowns, tuxedos and suits. 
Those days of cruising have changed over the years, especially on certain popular cruise lines. Now many still dress up on the fancier side, while others wear sundresses or slacks and polo shirts. I have seen some people not dress up at all. You will even see people in jeans as well on some of the formal nights, you know, and on the non-formal nights in the main dining room on some of the major cruise lines. Um, you'll see anywhere from casual sundresses to t-shirts and shorts. Uh, times have changed and people tend to dress much more comfortable these days. So bring what makes you feel comfortable and enjoy your cruise. Although I will say for the men out there, make sure you bring a pair or two of slacks because some of the main dining rooms as well as specialty restaurants will not allow shorts in the evening. I think we're up to number 18 now, and this is a very important question, and that is, um, are there medical facilities or services available on the ship? Well, yes, the ships are equipped with medical facilities and staff on board to help you um, when you're in need. Your home insurance, though, will not cover these services, and you will be billed on your onboard account. Also, the facilities, although available for emergencies, may not be open all hours of the day. I would tell my clients um, that if it's not an emergency or something that can wait till you get home, then that's probably your best option. As far as the cost go, tr travel insurance is your best friend here. You, it's a great option for these unexpected services. I would also recommend always traveling with small amounts of over-the-counter medications such as pain and fever reducer and acids and nausea relief medications and always travel with extra prescription medications in case of an emergency or a delay returning home. Also bring something for the possibility of seasickness. There are many available remedies such as a medication in pill form, there's patches, pressure, pressure relief bands for your wrist. And usually a lot of these things are sold on board as well, although they will cost you quite a bit more. So having them on hand um, is always a good idea. And number 19, the last one here, and that is how early can I get off the ship on debarkation day? Well, if you're able to carry all of your own luggage off, then you can be one of the first groups <laughs> to get off that ship. Most cruise lines uh, once cleared with authorities, when returning back to the port, we'll call the guests that are self-debarking with all of their belongings to disembark the ship first. So if you have an early flight, this is probably your best option. Most cruises will uh, be back in port around 7 a.m. and begin debarking the ship shortly after that. If you don't plan to carry your own luggage off the ship and you have it set out the night before for the cruise line to take it off the ship for you, then most cruise lines will give you a number for disembarking the ship and they will call you in the order of that number. Some cruise lines will leave the numbers in your cabin the day or evening before returning back to your home port. There are a couple of cruise lines that will have you go pick the number up at a designated location. So if you have not received a number, just ask your cabin steward and he will be able to let you know where you can pick one up at. But bring your patience because sometimes debarkation process can take a while. Trying to get 2,500 to 5,000 people off the cruise ship in two hours can be a bit challenging. Well, that's all I have for you today. I know 19 is kind of a strange number um, to come up with. And you're probably saying, hey, Sharon, where's number 20? How about you guys come up with number 20? Please post your question in the comments below and I will personally answer it for you. And that will be number 20. And it'll also help others because you know if you have a question there you know there's always someone else out there with that same question as well if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please don't forget to subscribe and give it a like before clicking away and share it with a friend <laughs> thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video